precious family. Last night, Ezekiel and I were visited by the Lord in great conviction of the areas in which we have fallen short. In great kindness, he both convicted and pardoned us, leading us to have so much more reverential fear of him. I share this painful experience along with his admonitions to us all that this is a season of correction and blessing to prepare us to come up higher. Jesus began, My people, it is not my heart nor my plan to see you suffer and I abhor the possibility of losing you to Satan. For this reason, I am addressing those things that are dangerous habits in your lives. These are the things that open the door to Satan to sift you and will ultimately bring you deep sorrow. Last night I visited Claire and Ezekiel with my conviction and forgiveness. It was terribly painful for us, but it needed to be done. They are far from perfect, but willing nonetheless to strive towards perfection with my help and continue to cleave to me in the most trying moments when I must crush them into fine powder. Wow, that's an understatement. Fine powder, I I don't even know what to say to that except that it was much more than fine powder. It was like smoke. And yeah, like being annihilated. I wish to visit all of you in this very same way because you have unrighteous habits that are separating you from me and causing your life to go stagnant and cold. My heart aches when I must visit you with these measures, more than you will ever know. Yes, I crush my very own self into fine powder at the same time. Understand that I live in you, and what you suffer, I suffer more severely on your behalf. I have asked Mother Claire to do series on sins so you may recognize where you stand and where you fall short with me in holiness. I could give you fluffy assurances, but in the end you would be crestfallen that I did not deal with your sins before the judgment. And yes, judgment is coming to America and the world, and so is revival. But to carry these precious living waters, you must be clean from those things that make you unrighteous. This is not a session of condemnation. Rather, it is more a move of conviction, even as the woman caught in adultery was subjected to. They wanted to kill her, but I knew the goodness in this soul and stood in the gap for her and forgave her all of her sins. And of course, those who picked up stones had the very same sins on their hearts and in their lives. Last night was the beginning of a cleansing for my bride, and I wish for these messages to spread all over the world. To some, they will seem unreasonably harsh. To those of you who react this way, you have not yet encountered my holiness or known me in my glory to the depth that would cause you to live every moment of your lives in reverential fear. This fear must be present to carry forth the living waters and bring salvation to the nations. Such is the nature of sin that it causes breaks and barriers in our relationship, which in turn weakens your witness and faith. This is why Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. You know well the times you have allowed compromise, and I want to cleanse you even as I cleanse the woman caught in adultery so that you can cleave to me with a clean conscience in the most devastating and trying moments. My precious heart dwellers, it is indeed the little foxes that spoil the vine. If Satan cannot provoke you to murder, he still can do much damage by causing you to ignore the poor who are dying that you should have helped or cause you to destroy a minister's reputation through one unkind word. Actions such as these have the same effect as murder. They steal life from that soul, life that they could have had with the community in ministry, livelihood to supply for their family, and worst of all, stealing confidence from their following in their teachings and prayers, which may be mostly good and sound and biblical. Character assassination is Satan's work. All his demons are trained in character assassination so they may put in a fatal word at the right time in your mind, which you thoughtlessly repeat. 
There is reason that Satan is said to accuse you day and night before the throne of God. He is the accuser of the brethren, and this is the most poisonous, debilitating, destructive tool in his arsenal. When you feel badly about yourself, you have no joy or inspiration to keep going. That is why soaking prayer is so important, because I visit you in those songs and restore your standing with me. Even when you are innocent, you still need restoration. Please believe me when I say I am not here to condemn you, but to show you where you can improve, not to injure others and carry the living waters of revival to a thirsty, dying world. These indiscretions are like holes in your clay pot, which is not sound enough to hold these precious anointings. My Claire, I want you to share my visitation with you and Ezekiel last night. Well, my dear family, I don't believe I've ever felt such profound repentance in my life, or perhaps at my conversion. I know the Lord allowed the enemy to throttle us. Ezekiel was in the worst torments I have ever seen him in. The Bible promises reading was enemies. So he prayed against them while also praying for their good and conversion. At one point, we both felt so utterly helpless, we began to pray, Mercy, Lord, please have mercy on us. And that's all we could pray for a long time. Then Ezekiel was infused with the grace to stand up to the enemy and declare their state and destination in loud and convicting words. Soon after that, the torment stopped, and the Lord began to speak through Ezekiel, recounting the words of the woman caught in adultery. Where are those now who condemn you? I do not condemn you. No others are condemning you, and your sins are forgiven. He was not referring to adultery as a sin in our lives, but sin in general. When he said that on behalf of Jesus, all I could say is, By your power, I will go and sin no more, Lord. Then Jesus continued to give utterance through Ezekiel, declaring his love as well as good and faithful things, graces we have received and used, along with beautiful promises and tender assurances of his loyalty to us, that he will never forsake us. And what were the sins I felt convicted of? Little things, really. Laziness and fasting, catering to my taste buds, not circumcising the flesh to be free of desires for certain foods. Once upon a time when I was younger, I was given the grace to fast and be totally disinterested in food or how it tasted. I know he has tried to offer me this grace again, but my love of self and personal weakness did not bear up under pressure, and I too easily gave in. And now, with this Nineveh fast, I am having to address these issues head-on and deny myself. The day before Lent began, I made a Ghirardelli dark chocolate cake with dark chocolate cream cheese and whipped cream frosting. It was... Medicinal, I consoled myself to believe, but then I realized I now have a huge temptation in the freezer because I had one piece and had to wrap the rest up for another time. In truth, I shouldn't have that cake at all, even in other times. So this is the goal I'm reaching for, to be free of the tyranny of the taste buds. In art supplies to make holy cards, I went overboard by getting an extra set of markers. I could feel it when I did it, but I ignored the feeling. That was wrong. I know I'm resolved to leave such foolish impulses behind by the power of his grace, as well as sharing markers with others that don't have them here in the community. These are only very little things, dear family, but they are symptoms of a love for Jesus that has grown cold and unresponsive. He knows I abhor this about myself and I have given him permission to change me. I do not want to live this way anymore. It's like a ship that is covered in barnacles, which slow down the speed and agility of the craft. The captain must take measures and bring it into dry dock and remove them. This is a time now when Jesus is preparing us to function at a higher level. Let's cooperate with him no matter how daunting the process. 
Let's focus more on his love and desire to make us who we are, who we cry out to him to be, the souls fully in love with our Jesus and willing to deny ourselves to have more of him. Pray for us, dear ones, as we too will pray for you. Lord Jesus, is this what you wanted? It is, Jesus continued, but I want you to continue to share occasions of sin that are normally ignored, sins of the church, sins of the chosen souls. There is much I want to rid you of this week, my precious heart dwellers. This is what I am aiming for. I will also visit you with consolations that you may taste the sweetness of coming up higher into my arms. One of our core group members came to share his readings yesterday morning, and they confirmed everything in this message that I received yesterday and the direction the Lord is leading us in. One reading from St. Faustina, Divine Mercy in My Soul, was thank you, Jesus, for doing me the great favor of making known to me the whole abyss of my misery. I know that I am an abyss of nothingness, and that if your holy grace did not hold me up, I would return to nothingness in a moment. And so with every beat of my heart, I thank you, my God, for your great mercy towards me. And another word he received is, there will be many tests and trials coming. Live in true holiness. Walk a blameless life. Walking a blameless life came up twice in the scriptures. Dear ones, we do not have properly formed consciences. This is why the Lord is asking for new insights into our motives and into the things that we do that we think are innocent enough, but in His all-holy eyes, they are detrimental to our souls. It's our culture that has formed our consciences, and our culture is corrupted. And uh, I think one thing to keep in mind here is the statement of holiness that's in the Beatitudes. But here's Psalm 15, which is another confirmation he received. And I wrote a song about this and recorded it. Who may dwell? Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is right, who speaks the truth from their heart whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent, Whoever does these things will never be shaken. We have also been given further light on discerning our Bible promise readings. The Lord told him to cover our ramas and books with the blood of Jesus before we get a reading and to use the discernment sword, the sword of truth over our left shoulders, to use that to make the sign of the cross over whatever you're using, the scriptures or uh, holy cards and then turn to the page that the Holy Spirit gives you. And he added to that that he will give us surgical discernment if we use that tool to sanctify and purify our holy books. So please put this into practice to clarify his holy will when it seems foggy. Again, I want to thank you for your kind support of the community. It has enabled us to keep building hermitages, to pray and reach out to the community at the foot of the mountain. We're seeing some beautiful touches of God on the local people who are mostly retired farmers and ranchers. And just to clarify, I want to say something about the community. We are not a survivalist community. We are a prayer community. We do not bear arms. We bear rosaries and prayers and the scriptures and pray the Lord's Supper to bring about change in the world for the better and to protect our government, our police force and troops, and to pray for the nation's safety and growth and holiness. Please pray for them as well. They have a very taxing and trying job right now. They need our prayer protection. Pray for their marriages and their children as well. 
police officer's wife goes through a lot of hardships when they're called into service. And again, I want to say that the prayer of choice over our nation is Psalm 91 and the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Let us not grow weary in well-doing, my precious family. Pray for us, especially for Ezekiel and I, to have the moral and physical strength to always choose the Lord's will above our own opinion. The Lord bless you, dear family, and keep you in his peace and protection. Amen.